So essentially, I've seen this problem in many contracts that I've you know audited so far for the Solana ecosystem. So in Solana, you know, essentially smart contracts are account based. Okay, so you can actually um, watch my other videos or you know do some research about the Solana structure. It is a bit different from Ethereum, you know, another ecosystem that you probably have some experience. Okay. So each account has, you know, um, some sort of, you know, metadata and uh, one of the fields, it's called owner and owner refers to program, uh, to program owner of the account. Okay. So as a developer, you got to, you know, always, you know, make sure for a specific accounts that they're doing or holding, you know, um, specific operations. Uh, you've got to make sure that uh, these accounts are limited to, for example, to the owner, to the admin user, not to everyone. And to do so, you've got to basically uh, control the owner field of the contract. But many devs actually forgot to do this or they do this actually in the wrong way. And that allows you know, hackers to basically hijack the contract and let's say withdraw all the funds and do some nasty stuff and screw up your business. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna actually explain you with this piece of code in Rust. And by the way, you know, Solana smart contracts are mostly written in Rust. Rust is not the only language. It's possible also to write code in C, but uh, Rust is the, you know, uh, basically uh, prevalence, you know, ecosystem for writing Solana smart contracts. That's why my snippet code also is written in um, Rust. There we go. Here is our snippet code here, and here we have an instruction or function. It's called withdraw funds, and it takes three arguments: you know, program ID, accounts, and amount. And here it dispatch you know information. And here we have a specific account. It's called ledger, and ledger. Uh, and over here we take advantage of ledger to identify whether you know we are dealing with the admin or a random dude. So developer actually. Put some checks here to make sure that's the admin and then do other stuff for example withdrawing funds and doing some stuff like that <coughs> so i just cut those stuff to just make things more simple simple and clear here for you guys so if you are guessing what is the vulnerability or you want to think about it you can pause the video because i'm going to you know reveal the issue in a second All right, so as you probably guess, the problem is here. So here, um, here we have an account called Ledger, and uh, you know, developer actually used this account uh, and probably store you know admin information inside of Ledger, and here checks that and make sure you know we are dealing with the admin based on the information inside of this account, right? So far, you know, so good, seems to be okay, right? The challenge here though is. Nobody knows actually, um, it's owns actually by a right person, right entity or not. Maybe, you know, our hacker hijack, you know, and craft a malicious, uh, you know, ledger, malicious account here. And, uh, you know, with the admin field, something like that, read the code, you know, many of these projects are open source, so really read the code and say, uh -huh, okay, so I can, you know, make craft, you know, my malicious uh, account here and impersonate the you know admin here and just simply bypass this and withdraw all the funds or do other nasty stuff here so um the lesson here is uh if you want to make sure you have the right you know um, policy in place um you got to be sure that uh this account or your ledger account uh basically can only be modified by the contract itself okay not by other entities and therefore it contains you know valid data not maliciously crafted data okay and um, and that's it there are also other mechanism here but that's actually is practical so i hope you enjoy this video if you like it please don't forget to subscribe and follow me thank you and see you soon bye